Sorry, we're gonna. Hello, hello. Sorry about that. Sorry, we're gonna have to cut the question short right now due to some timing, like this one. Sorry, I'm the, I have a mic still. Um, so I forgot I had a mic still. So the question was the rates. So the rate for the Tolone in that treatment where we looked at different fumigants was 35 gallons per acre. And when we did that with the Vapam cap, that was still at um, 35 gallons per acre. And the Vapam, I believe we had at 75 gallons per acre. So, all right. Well, if anyone else has any questions, I had a lot of information. Feel free to pin me down. But next we have a graduate student in my program, I should let the moderator introduce, but stay tuned. Thank you. Hello, hello. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. This is Rachel Rudolph, a PhD candidate under Lisa. Her research is focused on fumigant alternatives and cover cropping in red raspberry. Thank you. Hi, is the volume good? Too loud, too soft, looks good, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm a PhD candidate at WSU in the horticulture program, and I'm going to, this talk is about um, Brassicaceae seed mill and root removal as a management tool for root lesion nematode. So just a disclaimer that I have to put out there, um, I'm not endorsing Brassica seed meal or um, fumigation, fumigants, certain fumigants, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so just most of you are pretty familiar, I'm sure, with red raspberries. Um, the total acreage of red raspberry has increased in the Pacific Northwest, which is great. But um, a lot of the crop longevity has actually decreased, and some of that decline is actually attributed to replant disease complex. So many of you may have heard of this term already. It's also called um, replant disorder, and it's basically biotic and abiotic factors that affect growth, yield, development, general health um, of new plants that have recently been planted in um, sites where older plants of the same species have been removed. So basically raspberry being planted back into raspberry. So those factors, those abiotic and biotic factors include pathogenic fungi, pathogenic bacteria, plant parasitic nematodes, improper pH, and soil nutrient deficiency. Um, for the purpose of this project and this presentation, I'm going to be focusing primarily on plant parasitic nematodes, specifically Pratolinchus penetrans, also known as root lesion nematode. So it is one of the most important pests for red raspberry. Uh, it's a non-segmented roundworm, migratory endoparasite. So it moves between soil and roots and makes it quite difficult to um, manage because of its migratory nature. It can also survive for long periods of time in either roots or soil. It feeds on the roots. It causes reduced uptake of water and nutrients and dark lesions result as from this, and plants can decline pretty rapidly. So soil fumigation is typically um, used to manage root lesion nematode. But there are other alternatives, and many of you may have already tried some of these things, and some of them haven't been attempted at all, to my knowledge, in red raspberry. But they include nematicides, resistant cultivars, mulching, cover crops, soil solarization, anaerobic soil disinfestation, antagonistic microorganisms, and then root inoculum removal, which Lisa discussed previously, and also biofumigation and Brassicaceae seed mill. So we'll start with Brassicaceae seed mill or BSM. Um, what is it? Uh, it's a material remaining after the soil has been, or excuse me, after the oil has been extracted from mustard, canola, canola and rapeseed. It can be in pelleted or powder form, and it's applied to the soil like a fertilizer. You can spread it and incorporate it like you would a fertilizer. It's typically a pre-plant treatment. 
So what does it do? Well, so the glucosinolates, not to get too crazy into the terminology, but most brassica plants have glucosinolates and those glucosinolates are also present in brassica seed meal. And so with water um, and cell disruption, you can get isothiocyanates. And that is actually the isothiocyanates are the chemical or the compound primarily responsible for the potential suppression of pathogens. And interestingly enough, isothiocyanates or ITCs are very chemically similar to methyl isothiocyanate, which is the breakdown product of metam sodium. So they're similar, but they're not the same. One is a naturally occurring compound and one is not. Um, and ITCs, as I said, have shown to have fungicidal, bactericidal, and nematicidal properties. So there are some advantages to BSM. Um, application of timing is flexible. Unlike planting a cover crop, you can kind of do it on your schedule. Application to the soil is pretty quick and there's less time invested than taking care of a cover crop over the course of a season, as you would have to do if you were to actually plant uh, a brassicaceous crop, for example. Um, less water is required for BSM, but you do still need some form of irrigation in order to activate that um, process from glucosinolates to isothiocyanates. Um, no additional fertilizer is required. And in fact, there's, I think, about 6% nitrogen in BSM just naturally. So you kind of get a little nitrogen bump. Um, it does not serve as a host for plant parasitic nematodes as cover crops may. And it doesn't have the restrictions that chemical fumigants may have, such as you know, PPE and um, buffers and those sort of things. Disadvantages, and this is a big, big disadvantage, is that it is quite expensive. Um, and that comes along with lack of production facilities. So um, perhaps in the future, if, there, if the production, production increases, that the cost may drop. Also, previous studies have shown mixed results. So some studies have seen really positive results at um, suppressing certain pathogens and others not positive at all. So um, just to quickly go over root removal, I know Lisa just talked about it, so I'll make, um, I think a lot of you were, are, were in here for that. Um, also called root inoculum removal, and it's the physical removal of the old, possibly infected root material from the field when you're about to replant. Um, so in, the idea is to prevent future infections so that it possibly infected root material is physically removed and hauled away, and so you don't have that inoculum just sitting in the field waiting to infect new plants. So because root lesion nematodes can survive in plant roots for extended periods of time, the thought was, okay, what if we just remove this um, material completely? So um, chemical fumigation also does not always penetrate that old root material, depending on the thickness of the roots or the depth. And so that was also a consideration when deciding to try this root removal. So the objectives basically of this project were to figure out, you know, does BSM or root removal or both have a place in red raspberry production system up here? So we're comparing, we compared BSM to metam sodium and metam sodium at a half rate after um, raspberry roots have been removed in a replanted red raspberry production system. So this took place up here in London, and it was a replanted commercial Shimanus red raspberry field. Uh, it had a history of Pratolinchus penetrans and root rot. Uh, it was a completely randomized design, and it just, we just did it in one row 
and there were four replications of those four treatments and I'll get further into detail on those. And the plots are basically 30 feet long and six feet wide and it began uh, fall of 2014 and is still ongoing. So the treatments were applied once prior to replanting and they include um, breast, so first of all, root removal occurred first before anything else. And so the BSM treatment included root removal followed by BSM application at a 1.5 tons per acre rate with us uh, incorporated into a six inch soil depth. And then the max fume, so this is on the label, the maximum amount that they recommend that you apply metam sodium. So 74 gallons per acre. And that was that followed root removal. So root removal occurred first, then the fumigation. And then minimum fumigation. So this is the minimum rate they say on the label that you can apply, which is actually half of the max rate. Um, so it's root removal and then uh, 37 gallons per acre fumigation. And then what is currently typically being practiced, which is no root removal and um, fumigation full rate. So again, these are results to date. Um, we're gonna collect data through spring and summer and possibly fall of this 2017, this upcoming year. So in that, so we reap the, the treatments were applied in the fall of 2014, just to recap, 2014, and then in the early spring, we fumigated. And then the shamanus plants were planted in following fumigation. So that first spring of sampling in 2015, there were no um, root lesion nematode found in the soil in any of the treatments. Not that shocking, right? But even BSM, which was applied in that fall, so had a full six months, there's no root lesion nematode found in the soil. And we did not collect roots in this instance because the plants were just recently planted. So just to explain a little bit these axes. So um, here are the treatments, brassica seed meal, minimum fumigation, max fumigation, and the control with no root removal. And then here we have the average Pratolinchus penetrans per gram of raspberry root, and then average Pratolinchus penetrans per 100 grams of soil. So this is pretty typical. We collect raspberry roots and soil. Um, so you can see there are big differences here. Um, Brassica seed meal in that first fall after treatment, so one year after treatment, the densities in Brassica seed meal were significantly higher than what people are currently doing now. Um, and they weren't significantly higher than either fumigation, but that was probably mostly due to the high variability in the samples but you can see that numerically there is a big difference. Again, this is something that we don't often see. The soil data is basically mirroring the um, root data. So again, brassica seed meal is um, higher than the rest, um, not significantly, like statistically speaking, because of the high variability, but numerically it is quite, um, much, a lot higher than the um, other three treatments. So spring of 2016, so a year and a half after the project was started, there are those significant differences continue both in the roots and the soil surrounding the raspberries. So now we're up into the near the 5,000 Pratolinchus penetrans per gram of raspberry root. Um, compared to, for example, a thousand or under a thousand for the industry control. Again, soil is almost exactly mirroring, but you can see that the axis, and this is typical, there's less Pratolinchus penetrans found in the soil compared to the roots, and that's pretty much, that's very normal. So here we have 300 compared to 5,000, right? But the differences are still there. So this fall, 2016, again, the differences continue. So here we have, but they're lower. So it was 5,000 and I'll show you a overtime graph here in a second. 
um, brassica seed meal continues to be significantly um, higher than the industry standard and now the max fumigation with root removal. Again, soil's pretty much the same, um, higher. Um, the numbers are lower compared to in the roots, but still pretty high. So here's over time. So this is the fall of 2015 to the fall of 2016. And it's pretty normal for populations to kind of spike, I think, in the spring um, as things are warming up. So blue is brassica seed meal. Orange is the minimum fumigation. Uh, green is max. And yellow is uh, this standard, the industry standard control. And you can probably, maybe some of you can't even see the green line because it mirror, it is like completely in sync with the industry standard. So that tells me that root removal is not really being effective here because we're not seeing that change. So um, vegetative growth. So in that first summer, we didn't collect berries because the plants were new. So there really weren't berries to collect but we did count, count number of canes and cane height. And there were no significant differences in either one. So numeric differences, but overall no, no significant differences. Um, yield and fruit quality. And this was from this summer of 2016. Although differences were noticeable among treatments, there was no statistically significant um, for either yield or fruit quality. So here, what I find interesting is that brassica seed meal had the lowest yield, but the highest fruit quality. So um, I think there's a little, maybe something we could tease out of this um, with the biological data that will be um, forthcoming later on. So here's just a breakdown of economics for brassica seed meal um, versus metam sodium. And I know a lot of people don't, um, may not use metam sodium, but um, from what I understand, I, I think it might be cheaper than some of the other fumigants. So it might be something, um, but I do know the, I believe the rigs are harder to come by because it's not as common here. So brassica seed meal, has you know, applied at 1.5 tons per acre, which is the recommended rate from the producer. Cost, quite expensive. Estimated yield for this project anyway, at, and this is a um, young plants, and then the bricks. And this yield is not, has not been adjusted for losses. So that's why it's, um, a little higher than it should be for a young planting. Um, it's an estimated yield. Minimum fumigation, 185 cost per acre. And so that's the minimum that the label suggests. And estimated yield, 6.2, bricks, 10.55. And then here's max fume and no root removal. So I'm not, I don't really know. Um, I think Dr. Devetter and, um, Dr. Sazada and Dr. Weiland um, are doing um, a cost analysis on root removal. And so um, I didn't include that here, but um, this, so this is just for fumigation and this does not include uh, necessarily the application. So it's the chemical itself. So there are, and both are pretty similar with or without root removal, right? So I guess the question is, you know, I get higher fruit quality, but lower yield with some of these things, is that worth it, right? Um, so root removal has not been shown to be effective in managing root lesion nematode during raspberry renovation. Brassica seed meal applied at a rate of 1.5 tons per acre does not suppress root lesion nematode. Maximum rate metam sodium suppressed root lesion nematode populations the best compared to um, other treatments. And root lesion nematode population densities increased, increased across all treatments. So um, even in the fumigation treatments, they still increased. 
And then also there may be other factors responsible for lack of yield and fruit quality differences among treatments. And that was the biological data I was um, referencing. So data collection will continue at least through the summer of 2017 with yield estimation. And then the soil microbial community um, will also be uh, incorporated into this study. So all the soil data, all the soil we collected is also being analyzed for possible changes in microbial st structure, microbial community structure that may be responsible for that flux in, you know, there's not a lot of difference in yield and there's not a lot of difference in fruit quality, but so maybe there's another factor at work here. So I'd like to thank the grower cooperator and my committee and people from both Dr. Vetter and Dr. Sazada's lab for their assistance. Any questions? <laughs>